What did you analyze with respect to China sales and how at risk they are? So the one thing, sir, we did was we looked at uh, overall 20% of sales for Apple comes from China. Within that, we assume about 65% is actually iPhone. And the service-related revenues from China is more like 20%. So we took the uh, hardware sales, which is iPhone, iMac, and the iPad, and looked at like, what the demand destruction looked like from a 5 to 30% demand destruction. Based on that, you get about a 1 to 8% impact on EPS for next year. We also looked at the extreme scenario where if China outright bans iPhones, which seems like a very long shot, but like what does it mean to earnings? And it kind of impacts your 20, uh, FY20 EPS by 26%. Another thing I'd also highlight is that, uh, you know, this is such a fluid situation. <clears throat> we saw in January there was an anti-iPhone sentiment in China that kind of changed in February <clears throat> when, China, when Apple gave a very good sweetheart deal during the Chinese New Year, there was some pricing cuts. So there was definitely a fluid situation. How, how long does this need to prolong for it to be long-lasting damage for Apple in, in China? So much of Apple's iPhone case is based on the operating system uh, and the ecosystem that you get hooked into. If someone does move onto a new, a new phone, whether it's Huawei or anything else, that means Android. Could, could they lose those customers forever? No, absolutely. There is definitely a risk. The one thing I would say is that when you've seen the customer base, the most loyal customer base for Apple does happen to be in the U.S., followed by Europe. China is probably the most frigidity, I would say, where the loyalties can switch based on the pricing of the device. So I wouldn't say the, lo the customer base is as loyal, but the folks who do subscribe to the services, which is mainly the games they download on the, I uh, on the App Store, are relatively more loyal to iPhone. Most of them are probably not. So how do you think about the price target from here with that kind of huge risk out there? Sure, absolutely. So what we do have is a $245 price target, but we do lay out a scenario on what happens with demand destruction going down. The worst case is 100% demand destruction implies a 26% hit to your earnings, and potentially that's like, that would make my price target be more like 200 versus 245 But clearly, like I said, this is a fluid situation. Nothing has happened yet, but we're just analyzing the, the series of outcomes based on what's happening.